All right, Ray, this is the next no-cost benefit that I wanted to give to you. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm, I'm probably going to say with utmost certainty the answer is no. Do uh, you have a will in place? I actually don't. You don't? It's cool, man. Most people don't. Uh, technically, you don't actually need a will, okay. but you should have something. Uh, a will can cost you between $500 and $3,000 and an attorney. Yes, not everyone wants to go out and drop that kind of cash on a, on a will. Um, <laughs> but this right here, this is called a family info guide. Okay. Uh, this can actually take the place of a will. So what this is, okay, what you're going to do later tonight, you're going to fill this all out, but you're not going to sign it. You take it to a notary, get it notarized, it becomes a legal document. Okay. It can be used in the place of a will. Uh, it can be used to contest finances, um, to when you meet with an attorney, lots of stuff like that. This is very important. Okay. So you want to put all your important information up here, all the stuff about yourself, um, you know, all your, your pertinent stuff. Well, obviously, this gets locked up in a gun safe or file cabinet or something like that. Okay. Um, did you serve in the armed forces? I didn't. No? Okay, no. we'll skip that there. Spouse's vital statistics, not married yet, but when you do, you want to put her stuff down. Okay. Um, if, she, if there was one, you'd put, obviously, I'd give her one, you guys would each do each other. Um, people to be notified in the event of death. This is very important, just because um, whenever people die, people need to grieve, travel, take off work. Yep. Um, you need to notify those people, give them ample notice. You might have friends that live out of town, out of I state, do. out of the country. Yeah. Right. So you want them to get that call from that important person. Okay. So if you died, who, who would be in charge of everything? Your mom, your brother? My brother. Your brother? Okay. Yep. So down here where it says person to be in charge of final arrangements, okay. what's your brother's name? Raymond. Raymond. So you're going to put down Raymond, his information here, where all his stuff here, okay. and make sure he has a copy of this, because Raymond is going to need to call these people and okay. let them know. Um, you don't want fi someone finding out secondhand, like Facebook or Twitter or something, that you died, like, oh my God, I didn't know right. you were sick, right. completely missing the funeral. You want them down, because again, you're, you're probably not going to need this for like 60, 70 years. Exactly. But you know, someday <laughs> your kids or whatever are going to need these names so they can go ahead and call them so these friends of yours can come to the funeral. Okay. Okay? Perfect. Uh, don't have a will, so skip that. Financial institution information, this is very important to have all your banking info. Um, are you familiar with the term probate? You know what that is? Uh, kind of. Basically, basically, when you die, everything gets frozen in probate. Okay. Probate lasts usually about six months, and the government just basically wants to charge 24% inheritance tax on whatever you have. So like your assets, your toys, your quad, your, your car, your <laughs> bank account um, is frozen. So, so what do you have, like PNC, First Commonwealth, something like that? PNC. PNC, cool. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Um, so say you die today, yeah. your brother couldn't just go to the bank tomorrow, swipe your card, and withdraw your funds. Really? He can actually be penalized by the IRS for doing so because wow. that money is now frozen. He's going to get it, you know, six, seven months from now, but he's going to have to pay inheritance tax on that. Oh, so wow. he can't withdraw that. Right. So it's important to have your banking info. Sometimes it alleviates the need for an attorney okay. uh, whenever he goes to claim those funds. I know PNC can be a stickler sometimes, and for good reasons, releasing right. funds to, to people that aren't the spouse. Mm -hmm. um, makes things easier. Also, there's a little secret I know. Um, if you have a notarized document, um, you can actually go to the bank with a receipt from the funeral home. So say you didn't have money from your, for your funeral. Yeah. He could go, he could pay for it, then go with a receipt from the funeral home in a notarized document and withdraw up to $10,000 prior to the probate process being over just wow. to cover the, the cost of your funeral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It's a little, little trick I learned. So like I said, it's important to put that stuff down there. Safety deposit box. I, I don't really think anyone has those anymore. No. Yeah, my dad has one. I, don't, I mean, he's one of the last people on earth, I think. <laughs> um, and then funeral service request. This is basically just they want you to decide if you want earth burial or cremation. Yep. I personally don't care either one right now. Cremation is the cheaper of the two. Right. They want you to make that decision just so Raymond or someone else doesn't have to make it for you. Okay. okay. Just decide what you want. Whatever you feel. Some people are very strong in either direction. Whatever, it's fine. Just just put it down. Um, also, if you have any prepaid funeral arrangements, I know you probably don't, but some older people pay for like the opening, closing the grave, and okay. a mausoleum space, and things like that. And you want them to get what they paid for. So exactly. I always tell people put that stuff down there. For instance, like my grandfather left me a plot. We have like a family row of plots. Okay. I have all that info down because that's probably where I'm going to go. Okay. Um, Anything like that or whatever, you want to put that down just so people don't forget about it later in life. Good. And then, oh, geez, geez, I skipped this part here. Um, estate information. This is for life insurance. Any permanent life insurance that you have outside of work, you want to go ahead and put that down there. Now, they recommend you don't put anything down you have through work because typically if you quit, retire, get fired, that stuff goes away. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, you probably don't know this, but close to $4 billion a year goes in unclaimed life insurance. That's from people that have policies that don't tell their kids, their spouse, their parents, whatever, and they die and no one claims on them. You right. know? It's not like you die two days later, 
real sorry to hear about your brother. Here's your 100000 It doesn't work that way. It's not like Publishers Clearinghouse. Right. You actually have to contact the company, file the claim. Like myself, I have life insurance through three different companies. So I have each company listed in the policy number of each company because I, I want my wife to claim on all that's three, right. not two out of three. You know, that's that's a lot of money. Exactly. We pay on this stuff our whole life. We want it to go to someone. You know, so um, like, so who, who do you have your permanent coverage through? So I actually, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that, I only have uh, temporary coverage, I guess, through, through work. So you don't have any any coverage outside of work? No, that's Jeez, it. Yeah, yeah. I have, uh... um, well, one good thing is with American Income, we have very, very exclusive union negotiated benefits okay. that you actually have access to through the sheet metal union, you being a dupaying member of the union. Um, the only problem is you have to qualify for them. Uh, about 60% of the people that I get in front of actually don't qualify for the benefits. Okay. Now, the reasons why people don't qualify are for a whole variety of medical reasons. Mm. Um, also, arrest, addiction, obesity, and mental health. Um, do any of those, those play a role in you? No? no. Nope. I mean, do you take any prescription medication or anything? No, nope, I'm nope. healthy as a horse. Okay, well, let me just ask you a few questions and we'll move on. All right, perfect. Now, I'm going to say that you have state law. Um, who, um, so who, who do you have your, your permanent coverage through? I actually have a, a policy through State Farm. Oh, really? Awesome. I do. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, you, me too. Me too. I actually switched, switched them about a year and a half ago. I got my homeowners, yeah, they got car insurance. Discount. I got like an umbrella plan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of accidental and a bunch of stuff. We got a real good rate. Exactly. It was awesome. Is that, is that kind of what you did? Exactly what I had. It's mostly just the accidental. Did yeah. you get that little, I, there was like an option to get 50000 in term. Did you get that? or? I did. So you got the fifty in term and the 200 accidental? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good deal. It was. Actually, I have my term. Now, do you understand the differences, the different types of life insurance? Do you know what I'm saying? When I say term, you know what I mean. I, say, I throw it around like nothing. No, they didn't really explain no. it. You know, let, let me, there's all different types of life insurance. You know, I, I have this real quick video kind of gives you a little tip right here. And I'll show you. I'll, I'll go ahead and start that.